titled The Biosphere Workbench. My name is Mike Boyle, and I have the special privilege to have Professor William Chen with me today. Let me tell you a little bit about Professor Chen. Professor Chen's innovation in zero food waste processing using platform technology for a circular food economy have been covered by many mainstream media outlets. His research findings have also been featured in the top academic journal, Nature. His views on food security have been featured in international media, including Ashai Shimbyung, AFB, BBC, Bloomberg News, CNBC, CNN, Fortune Times, Liberation, Los Angeles Times, South China Morning Post, and the Wall Street Journal. I thought I was going to get through that without making a mistake with all those titles. Uh, the recent Going Green program by CNN described Professor Chen as a game-changing leader in the green revolution of the food system, and I can clearly vouch for that. Professor Chen is advisor and consultant to Singapore government agencies, Food Industry, Asian Development Bank, the World Health Organization on matters related to food tech and food security. And we are extremely blessed to have Professor Chen with us today. And uh, just a, a brief overview before we get started. This program will be dedicated solely to that of what Professor Chen has actually developed. We want you to go ahead and pose us questions so that we can make this session as interactive as possible. And again, Professor Chen, thank you very much for donating your time. It was quite clear from that biography that you are all over the place. I knew that beforehand, but that only went ahead and proved it. So with that, I would say if I can go ahead and give you the stage and in fact i will go ahead and we can get started with your presentation right hello uh can can everybody hear me mike can you hear me yeah sorry you're we're doing fine you you can hear me okay all right so maybe you could uh, we can go back to uh the slides let me see Okay, I hope you can see the slides. So uh, it's not a presentation of what we do here. It's just uh, three slides to give everyone a sense of uh, what's going on in Singapore. So the title of my presentation is called Solving Food Waste Problem From Within, which suggests that uh, we can do a lot of innovations using food waste itself, right? The next one, um, So the next slides basically uh, summarize um, our philosophy and motivation. Uh, the motivation is uh, uh, based on the challenges facing Singapore food security. For those who have not been to Singapore, Singapore is a small island state uh, located at, uh, at the tip of a, a, a peninsula with Malaysia and Indonesia as our neighbors, our uh, country is only 700 uh, kilometers square. And the, such a small country only have less than 1% of the land allocated for farming, for agriculture. So which means uh, uh, we import most of the food from overseas sources. And with the uh, ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and the disruption is doing to the global supply chain, we really feel the, the, the how fragile the food supply chain can be. And to improve Singapore food security, a lot of things should be done and can be done. Uh, on the top right corner, what you see is actually um, a summary of the challenges. First, we have a shrink, shrinking farmland. Second, we have a lot of food waste issue to be addressed. Uh, you know, in Singapore, we generate the uh, the amount of food waste we generate every year can fill up uh, 15,000 Olympic-sized swimming pool. For a small country, that's a, quite a huge uh, uh, problem. Uh, 
We also have an aging population uh, here in Singapore, but I would like to focus on full waste reduction as our motivation because we see this as a missing link for the food security. It's just like a kitchen uh, water tap. If we own the tap without using the water, then no matter no no amount of water is enough. So likewise, if we can uh, utilize food efficiently, uh, we are reducing the the burden of Singapore government's uh, food import. And then if this technology can be propagated in the region or to the world, then we will have uh, we will see lesser of the food waste problem and uh, food security can be uh, greatly enhanced. Not sure. Uh, I, I'm losing the slide. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, food waste reduction, therefore, is our motivation. You will see later on some of the product of our innovation. You may wonder why this over the place. In fact, there are only two types of innovation we develop. First is to reduce food waste generation at the source, which means practically. We uh, by by extending the shelf life of food produced, we are actually contributing to the lesser food waste generated. The second one is actually using platform technology to recover nutrient from food waste and re, re uh, convert the remaining solid residue into uh, packaging material. For example, uh, in doing so. We create this scenario summarized on the top left corner. We call it food circular economy, zero waste food processing. Uh, I will show you the next slides about the, um, um, some of the innovation we have. Uh, so this is our industry engagement. As you can see, uh, it looks very uh, diverse. But if you um, um, sort of uh, keep what I just shared with you in mind on the previous slide, you can see that all these uh, follow the underlying principle of platform technology and uh, towards full waste full reduction. Uh, for example, when we talk about nutrient recovery from the soybean residue shown on the previous slide, uh, what you see here it's actually a fermentation process which allows a breakdown of polymer and then uh, uh, sort of a, uh, which can be used in other applications. One of, one of which is actually a support the uh, urban farming setting. In this case, we talk about replacing the culture medium for protein rich microalgae in the urban setting. So uh, this is a result of our uh, innovation showing that uh, fermented soybean residue can replace efficiently the commercial culture medium for protein-rich microalgae, uh, what you see at the, at the uh, bottom left corner. And uh, uh, on the, at the uh, bottom, no, top, Right, uh, left corner, what you see is a report in the business time predicting that the uh, innovation will actually bring about a disruptive uh, improvement for food industry. And sure enough, we have uh, this uh, product uh, in partnership with a local company, uh, Unitad. Uh, this is a probiotic ice cube uh, developed in the partnership. So this is our first uh, commercial product that we have developed. So I'd like to share with you. Um, I don't know whether you can see it. So this is, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, so, oops. Ah. So this is already available at the uh, Singapore main, mainstream supermarket chain. You can find it. So the advantage of this thing is, it's very simple because it's uh, uh, based on our fermentation technology and to produce a neutral medium for consumers to choose to make their own beverages and stable in the acidic condition, alkaline condition, and even uh, 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 light uh, alcoholic condition. So uh, we are providing consumer with a new options from very simple innovation. Let me go back to the, uh, the slide. Uh, the, the second one 
is uh, actually uh, what you see in the middle at the bottom is called antimicrobial uh, a mask, right? Antimicrobial reusable mask. So you may wonder, this is to actually reduce the spread of a COVID-19 infection. You may wonder, how does how 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 do our food innovation got to do with this uh, uh, mask? Well, if you may recall at the beginning, in the previous slides, we we mentioned that extension of shelf life of uh, a food produce will help in reducing food waste generation as source. So one local company, textile company, uh, actually uh, took note of our innovation, but they, they were thinking out of the box. So they were thinking of using our antimicrobial uh, natural food preservative as an agent to prevent the uh, spread of COVID-19. And what they have done is they, they license out our technology yeah, without even uh, 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 doing any research uh, collaboration work with us. Uh, here you go. This is also a product of our innovation. This is antimicrobial face mask. And these uh, masks are antimicrobial and reusable and washable. And it has been distributed to all the Singapore household at the peak of uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, last year in April last year. So you can see that uh, uh, our innovation for our food uh, um, um, waste uh, endeavor has uh, have much broader applications. Uh, so you see when we develop technology, platform technology to reduce food waste, uh, that uh, uh, raw material that we take in can be uh, very diverse. It can vary from soybean residue, Burro span green, or even the uh, waste cooking oil, which I will now have no time to explain here. And uh, but the application of this uh, upcycled food waste can go even beyond food uh, uh, space. In this case, antimicrobial mask. What you see in the middle, uh, at at the top, is actually the our joint innovation lab with a Singapore local company. Uh, called FNN, which has been around for 140 years. At the time when they knocked on our door, we were only uh, about four years old. Uh, bear in mind that uh, our food science and technology program has been around for less than six years. So uh, they opened up an uh, entirely funded uh, innovation lab by using their funding. And uh, uh, this has attracted government minister's attention and the Minister of Education at the time, Minister Ong Ye Kang, on the photo on the right hand side, uh, came down to open the innovation lab. And the product from this innovation lab will soon be available on the market also, uh, end of this year. On the right hand side, what you see is that another example of our innovations uh, using platform technology. Uh, one is the uh, Again, fermentation. In this case, we use fermentation to uh, remove the um, protein and lipid from prong shells. You may, you may wonder, why do we use prong shells? Well, prong shell for one thing, is rich. They are rich in chitin. And, uh, uh, and the chitin actually can be used, can be converted easily into chitosan. And the chitosan-based packaging material is, was therefore developed at the in the, uh, below the the flask with the prong shell, I will show you some example here. Uh, so what you see, uh, uh, the 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 saucer that uh, I I was holding uh, contained the dry um, uh, prong shell that you see here. So this all real. This is a, let me see, let, let me get used to the thing. So this is a prong shell uh, after fermentation. The fermentation uh, in this case has served a different purpose. For for other type of food waste, we actually use fermentation to recover the nutrient. For the prong shells, we use fermentation to remove the protein and lipid from the prong shell. In the process, we enrich the chitin, which is then converted to chitosan and then make the packaging material that you see uh, 
below uh, the shiny shiny one so this is uh, uh, what you see on the slide but i will show you the real example here here you go so you can see uh, this is a, a prong shell derived kaidosan package kaidosan based packaging material they are biodegradable they are low cost and then uh, they're sustainable because uh, we, we we will always have a prong shell um, from the seafood consumption so the 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 sustainability is there and the 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 next product i like to share with you this is something called durian a tropical fruit uh, um, very much abundant in the southeast asia uh, in singapore alone we consume about 12 million durian a year how's that how does durian look alike so this is a, a durian husk you see on the image and also uh, uh here so on the wait let me see ah this is only uh, a quarter of the durian but of course uh, after we finish the flash and the remaining what do we do so far we throw it away so you can imagine 12 million durian uh, uh um the house from 12 million durian hanging around in the environment this is a heyday for government agencies to clean up so what we have done is to develop uh, uh, extraction technologies similar to the uh, what i described in the previous slide here we show that cellulose extraction can be done from uh, soy soybean residue after fermentation and also burra span green here we extend the extraction technology to durian husk why because there all these raw materials are rich in the uh, cellulose in fiber so as i mentioned uh, our technology are defined as a platform base therefore when we move around various raw material can always always be uh, uh, applied into our uh, technology in this case what i have done is to develop uh, this uh, uh, what you see here uh, hydrogel for cellulose or hydrogel, for those who have studied chemistry, they know it's extremely easy. It's just a cross-linking process. So what you see here is what you see on the, oops. Ah, this is a piece of uh, hydrogel uh, uh, derived from the uh, durian husk. And what you have, what can we do about this? This is uh, and then uh, add some um, natural food preservative, so that will become antimicrobial. So what is an uh, application? Uh, this is application. We would then have this uh, uh, bandage, right? Antimicrobial bandage hydrogel, which will smoothen the wound and antimicrobial, and, and this will have a, a future potential. To replace uh, or to improve the current medical uh, bandages and uh, uh, for those who have a skin condition this is another piece of good news because uh, hydrogel this in this case the hydrogel is a natural uh, is uh, is moist so it will soothe the uh, itchiness of uh, uh, individuals our, our friends uh, who may have this uh, uh, chronic skin condition called uh, eczema okay so i think uh, this is uh, um, we have a lot of other applications but what i'm trying to uh, bring across here is that food waste can be reduced by various ways first if we eat less there's no harm to eat less right uh, then we reduce food waste second we can reduce food waste generation at source by developing uh, antimicrobial, uh, plant-based antimicrobial, uh, natural preservative. So this, uh, why is this better than the chemical preservative? Because they are more potent than the current chemical preservative. What is more potent? Potent means they are more effective. That means they will extend shelf life of food produce much longer. Then we have less food waste. Second one, uh, well, we cannot prevent the food waste uh, from not generating at all. So for the generator food waste, what do we do? The two steps. First, 
first is to apply fermentation to take nutrient out of this uh, uh, side stream for food waste. Second is to convert the remaining residue into biodegradable packaging material. So what you see here on the last slide is all the application of our natural solution derived from food waste applied to solve the to reduce food waste and solve this uh, problem that is uh, actually become more um, acute for not just Singapore, for, but for the most country in the world. So with this, uh, I, I, I think I can uh, interact with the audience and answer some of the uh, questions. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Sure, good deal. Thank you very much, Professor Chen. And yes, we do have a few questions. I'd like to go ahead and get started with a question that came from Sophia. Are you collaborating with big companies already? Are there there are many which should use your innovation? Amazing work. And we received that comment more than once. Amazing work. Are you working with any larger corporations currently? Right. Uh, well, uh, in Singapore, what we do is uh, uh, you know, uh, in the when we develop innovations, what we do is we protect it uh, under the intellectual property, and then from there we we would uh, discuss with industry and sign research collaboration agreement. So most of these uh, a product commercial product you have seen, except the mask, most of these uh, commercial product are uh, actually derived from the. Uh, research collaboration agreement with the uh, companies. Uh, I, I'm not sure what is defined as a big company or small company. Uh, in Singapore, um, a small country, uh, the company size uh, tend to be smaller too. But we so we work with uh, uh, not just local company but also international uh, companies from US. Uh, for example, the microalgae work. The, the, the one I, I described using fermented soybean residue solution to replace cultural medium for microalgae, that is with an uh, uh, American company. And of course, we also collaborate with uh, a number of uh, uh, regional companies to commercialize this uh, innovation into consumer products. And I see that Sophia is making you an offer that perhaps you might uh, would like to take up later on. If you are looking for some additional contacts, she oh, is sure. willing to go ahead. Oh, I, well, Sophia, it's a message for you. Uh, right. Please, I'll go ahead and play matchmaker to uh, go yeah, ahead and ensure send me that you email. Make, yeah, I'll yeah. go ahead and make sure that all that is taken care of. I, I would have some questions for you, Professor Chen, if I may. We when we talk about innovation and we talk about utilizing what is already there using utilizing the biosphere one of the biggest questions we already we always have is economies of scale yep, we can yep. work on projects on smaller levels but yep. is all of this scalable yeah okay uh, this is an excellent question oh uh, well you know uh, we have this uh, uh, happy problem is uh, well at the beginning when we first developed this uh, food science and technology uh, program at my university, um, the focus on, was on education. And uh, but my fingers are, uh, are always itchy towards uh, doing something different. Uh, so we, we, because we did not have uh, much of a funding support for research, so virtually I know no funding support for research, which means I had to look for simple solutions and uh, and uh, cost effective, right? Uh, simple because I had in mind that uh, if our innovations were taken up by industry, it cannot be too complicated because optimization of condition is critical. If we have 10 steps of uh, operation, then it will be a massive headache. Is anything uh, 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 pop up in the middle of operation or production? So the, the principles are twofold. One, simple. Second, cost effective because I have no money. So looking back, so you, if you look at our innovation, it's always very simple, cost effective by default. And looking back, industry loves our innovation because first is simple, second is uh, 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 easy uh, and low cost to implement. So uh, to answer your question, Mike, directly, our innovations, uh, the turnover of our innovation to product can be as fast as a few months, 
as long as uh, uh, two, three years, but nothing like uh, a mission to Mars. Yeah. Well, if I if I understood you correctly, William, then that means that you are deploying frugal innovation because you don't have much uh, resources. You need to make sure that what you do is very effective, uh, yep. and so you have these natural constraints. And so that's very interesting that we are we come up with another example of how we can use frugal innovation to actually go ahead and support the circular economy. And I Absolutely. would I would imagine that based upon the approach that you're taking, it's very possible to move into new regions where you would work primarily with the resources to be found within the region and follow similar processes, right? Exactly, absolutely. I entirely agree with this, uh, your, your uh, thinking process in the sense that uh, um, having uh, developed uh, innovation in Singapore and implement in the local industry is only the first step because Singapore being small, uh, the impact at the world stage or at the regional stage will always be limited. So one way to move forward is to uh, sort of uh, work together with neighboring countries. Uh, and fortunately, in this case, our innovations are simple and cost effective. So only when we rally support from the regional countries, uh, we implement our innovation to improve the the food system, then we will see a, a, a sizable impact. And in doing so, another important uh, consideration is that we will enhance regional food security because uh, if the next infectious disease agent like uh, COVID-20 uh, uh, hit us uh, on the worst stage about the supply chain, including food supply, then we will have uh, we will worry less because we know by then the regional food security will be enhanced through this collective effort. Yeah, I can see right now that this is going to be a great matchmaking session for you, William. Uh, as we have Joyce, who's come gonna come ahead and come up with a question, or actually more of a an opportunity for you. Uh, have you considered collaboration with African researchers? Absolutely, absolutely. We would uh, initially, a few years back, you know, we have this uh, 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 waste cooking oil project that is uh, to convert the waste cooking oil to a natural convert, uh, process into carotene oil, very high value uh, food, colorant, food additive, uh, and, and so on. And the idea here is to uh, implement this technology to Africa. Uh, unfortunately, the, the the project didn't didn't take off. So that the 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 potential is that uh, we can use this to carry out all these cook, with cooking oil in every country. But I was approached by Indonesian uh, huge uh, conglomerate because they they produce a lot of instant noodle in Africa. You know, instant noodle you do a lot of frying, then you generate a lot of uh, with cooking oil. So that was a uh, 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 one potential application. The second one is that. Uh, at the time when there was this uh, Arab Spring, a lot of uh, petroleum infrastructure was damaged and soil was contaminated. So our technology also have a potential to do the soil remedi uh, remediation, uh, remediation uh, improvement and restoration. So uh, yes, definitely our uh, outlook is always uh, uh, very proactive. So we would uh, we'll be happy to collaborate with uh, uh, interested party from all over the world, including Africa. Well, sounds like I have another opportunity to play matchmaker because I know Joyce and I will ensure that both of you are being put together. So I have two tasks to be followed after this live stream. Another question came through from Diana. Uh, does the fruit husk have any nutritional value for people, animals, soil generation or regeneration? Sorry. Ah, oh, this is a... Uh, uh, well, this is a, a good question. Uh, in fact, this is related to the nature of the fruit, right? Um, by by uh, by what we have seen is that it's a durian husk, right? This is a durian durian husk. Uh, durian husk, right? Um, this one is a uh, very rich in fiber. In fact, by itself, there's no much of a nutrient value. Uh, so we which makes our uh, job easier because we don't have to remove the 
protein or lipid from the durian husk, we can simply start the process of uh, extracting cellulose from the durian husk. But depending on the on the type of fruit, you know, we have a all kind of fruit in Southeast Asia. So our te platform technology need to, to tweak, to adapt to the nature of the fruit. So I think anything we do, uh, we don't do it randomly. We first analyze the composition of the starting material. From there, we develop strategy to address the uh, challenge uh, uh, accordingly. Great. And in fact, I'd like to go ahead and piggyback also with a question from Diana. They, you mentioned earlier in the presentation the idea of utilizing food for other purposes. And what we tend to forget is that the food that we eat is only part of that of what's actually grown. And in my mind, we need to take a much more holistic viewpoint. A question for you, William, is so would that be part of your research prior to starting a project, looking at the components and trying to decide what is usable and for what purpose to make sure that there's no waste at the end? I'd be curious to hear a little bit more about your processes. Right. Oh, well, this is a, a very high level question, Mike. I think uh, this uh, not just uh, involve uh, uh, food scientists or food technologies, but in high, and, and you also require uh, um, sort of uh, support from the government in terms of infrastructure setup to sort of uh, sorting. What you what you can see is that we always start our raw materials tend to be homogeneous. There's a reason for that because any innovation we develop from there can be easily scaled up because they're homogeneous, like soybean residues, even the durian husks. But moving forward. I see uh, challenges uh, at the uh, uh, various front. Uh, first uh, is to reduce food waste. Reduce food waste can be, uh, you know, uh, can be done using natural food preservative. It can be done through sorting of the messy uh, restaurant or household food waste. And then the, all these innovations do have a place to address the homogeneous sorted out food waste one by one. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that uh, reducing food waste is extremely important to the world economy and world food system. As you know, uh, now the traditional farming face uh, various challenges, including uh, this uh, disruption of uh, uh, food supply chain and then climate change and global warming. So uh, if we can reduce, there was this survey done by uh, Food and Agriculture Organization under the UN, which shows that if we can reduce food waste to zero, absolutely zero, then there's no need to grow more food crops, even with GMO. This, this is not, there's no need for such thing because we we'll have done a very efficient food system. Of course, when we talk about food waste generation, it's not limiting to farming or processing or post post processing. It's also about supply chain monitoring. You know. Uh, uh, so that uh, we can monitor the uh, reduce uh, food loss, not just food waste, but food loss is also an important uh, consideration for this uh, uh, endeavor in reducing food waste. Another aspect I'd like to share is that uh, uh, we need to consider alternative food sources. So uh, uh, food crops is, uh, is what we eat what we use to see, what we use to eat, but there are a lot of natural, naturally occurring uh, uh, food as, uh, uh, crops that we, we don't pay attention. For one example is uh, uh, underutilized crops like uh, Bambara uh, groundnuts. This uh, kind of underutilized crops uh, uh, are sort of vary from region to region. So uh, again, this is a, a, a question that for local government to look into, for local food technology to, to sort of look into and develop their a solution for their local condition. Uh, other areas like is uh, urban farming. Urban farming is a very important development. We look at the urban farming as a, a, a very health, very valuable uh, complement to the food system because by 2050, more than 70% of the world population will, will live in a city. So uh, by developing a viable, sustainable um, urban farming uh, system, 
that would uh, considerably shorten the distance uh, from the farm traditional farm site to the city and also uh, uh, mitigate the potential impact on the food supply chain and and consumer will love the urban farming uh, produce because they are fresher uh, they are more nutritious and they look prettier also. Uh, the, the, the next, next uh, challenges, the next challenge we may see in the food system will be how to convince consumers to take some of this uh, uh, new, new generation of food produce. Food, for example, when we talk about alternative protein, it's not always natural occurring. Some of them are uh, processed like uh, cultivated meat, uh, and also maybe plant-based protein, all this, uh, or even the microalgae protein. So, uh, so there are solutions for food system, but it's just a matter of coordinating and also raise awareness of the importance of developing a efficient food system. So the future is bright, actually. I, I that's very promising words. Thank you very much for that, William. I, I'd like to, I, we received a, a few other questions, but I'd like to piggyback on that of what you just said. And we talk about within the circular economy the idea of correct of creating closed loops, and the idea is the the closer the distance the better the chances are to us for us to actually go ahead and create those closed loops. In the beginning of your presentation, you talked about the the amount of land mass that can be used for farming in Singapore, and that's being reduced constantly. Uh, urban farming, of course, is one solution. One that we hear often enough is the idea of vertical farming. And I understand that that is a bit outside of your domain. Uh, that being said, Based upon what you're experiencing in Singapore, what do you feel is the potential of something like vertical farming? Well, uh, as I uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, this uh, urban farming, vertical farming, uh, very uh, attractive option. I emphasize on the option for for us to consider uh, because uh, um, this urban farming setting usually. Uh, Technology driven, and the cost is uh, is always a bottleneck. Uh, but then we need to also see that the consumers buy in, consumers demand will drive the supply, will push up the production yield, and in the process lower down the the cost. So I do see a, a bright future for this uh, 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 vertical farming. To 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 just sort of to show you the how food system is uh, interconnected uh, uh, very closely. So I can share with you that uh, the innovation from our food waste uh, upcycling can actually spill over to the vertical farming. For example, we have shown that um, uh, fermented uh, soybean residue solution can replace culture medium. And uh, because they're so nutritious, they can also every even con uh, we can even consider the utilization as a uh, uh, you know organic fertilizer for the uh, vertical farming. And, and uh, uh, likewise, uh, a lot of people are moving into lowering down the cost of production for the cultivated meat. And then there we also see a potential from our a full waste valorization because um, the cultivated meat, no matter what we say, uh, will remain costly and unless we can replace a, a component or ingredient or cultural media with a sustainable and cost-effective uh, ingredient. But this is something uh, that is happening. So uh, I hope that uh, if we still have this kind of uh, live stream webinar next year, I will I will be happy to share uh, progress from our end. Right. And in fact, that's something that we haven't talked about so far. I know a little bit about what you're up to, William, uh, because I've been spying on you for a very long time. <laughs> but one of the biggest activities I could remember a number of months ago was the uh, the an alternative for meat Asian menu that was released in Singapore not too long ago. Yeah, And I know uh, you were highly involved. All right. So that is actually uh, cultivated chicken, right? Is uh, from the U.S. company Eat Just. I think Singapore uh, uh, government has always been proactive to uh, push for technology development. In this case, Singapore is the first country in the world to have approved this uh, sale and production of cultivated meat 
That is why it makes a, a huge uh, um, impact on the world stage. And, and uh, uh, I would say that uh, uh, for a small country like Singapore, uh, any produce, food produce from the urban farming setting uh, would be very very much welcome. First, uh, we need to see that the cow leader meat there's nothing, there's really nothing too fanciful. This is a direct extension of tissue engineering that everybody knows, except that in this case, we are going through this uh, uh, for the full application and produce as a much larger amount. Uh, and uh, secondly, I would say that uh, uh, all these uh, novel food, in my view, uh, if we consider them and we promote them to consumer as a new option, then we will have a much easier time. The worst case scenario is we say, if you don't eat this cultivated meat, you will not have beef steak tomorrow. Then we will face a lot of pushback. I think uh, we need to work with time, work with consumers to sort of uh, make this uh, uh, tech-driven uh, food uh, uh, production uh, much more sustainable and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, welcome by the consumers. Yeah. And I could only add to that of what you just said, William, is that I've noticed over the last year that there is much more of a demand for these alternatives. And I think that we've made tremendous inroads with regards to the technology. And so I have made a note of what you said, that we should check with you in a year's time. So that's my third my third task that I'll need to go ahead and com complete. So please don't be surprised if I come knocking on your door in roughly a year's time to actually go ahead and follow up on that. I like to. I didn't want to um, neglect um, uh, some comments that were coming from Diana. Vertical farming systems are becoming more affordable. Many are already advancing urban nutrition and net zero objectives. And I think that especially once we are losing the land that is required for farming and we're looking for the closed loops if we can go ahead and invest in the technology here on the vertical farming front then the possibilities are of course much bigger and there was another comment that came through on from diana that i'd like to go actually a question that i'd like to go ahead and pose to you could bio bioplastics be made from the fruit husk Oh yeah, well, uh, that's a good question. Is in fact, is, uh, uh, we can uh, put it as a conclusion remark for my about plastic, not for my presentation, because the what we have shown is this. Uh, uh, this thing, right? This is uh, uh, hydrogel, but uh, 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 prior to the conversion to hydrogel. Is actually a, a cellulose powder, and cellulose powder uh, have been uh, uh, converted easily into biodegradable packaging material. So both both this hydrogel based uh, uh, bandage and uh, uh, cellulose based uh, uh, clean film are biodegradable. Uh, so they are they are uh, th this is the aim of this uh, uh, circular economy and uh, total um, zero waste food processing. That is to one stone, two birds. First, we reduce food waste. The second one, the message that Diana has brought out very uh, nicely is that we are developing solutions to replace, to reduce the uh, plastic waste. Yes, full agreement. And um, I am afraid William, we are reaching the end of our appointed time. I'd like to give you an opportunity, perhaps, of sharing a, a few closing words before I hand over the mic back to you. I'd like to thank all of you for participating today and posing some very, very good questions. I think that this dialogue has been uh, certainly fruitful from my perspective. And I think for, for you, William, I, I realized your passion and the, that of what you were actually talking about. And that's um, not necessarily something that we experience online. So I'm very appreciative for that. So perhaps uh, maybe closing words to our audience, um, not only those that are with us live, but those that might go ahead and watch this video later on. Any closing words from your, from your perspective? Uh, well, I, I would say that uh, through our innovations, uh, we come to realize uh, that uh, uh, food innovations need not 
need not have rocket science every day, right? We can develop simple solutions. But the only thing is that the, we need to have is to see the no, uh, see through the obvious, right? Uh, and the solutions uh, can be simple. And uh, we uh, through our industry partnership, we can see that this uh, so-called simple lab-based innovation can actually contribute to uh, sort of uh, development of uh, consumer product. And in along in the process, we also achieve the goal, initial goal of reducing food waste. So I think uh, if we can work together uh, to use this mindset, not to the, the not necessarily using the same innovation to develop innovations uh, according to the conditions in our uh, respective country or regions.